Talk TV. Got Anthony Gordon, Travis Mondal here. It's December 9th, Friday evening. We got about an hour and a half left of daylight. Um, very light and variable winds. You know, it's about 25 degrees, so good conditions. We'll see what happens. We're uh, here on some public ground. We're going to go check out this uh, bean field and see what it looks like and just kind of do an observatory hunt tonight. Uh, I am going to take my bow and if we get a spot to set up and kind of you know, on a, close to a trail or something and just kind of observe the field. I mean, we're going to be optimistic, maybe shoot a doe or something tonight, but it's mainly just observatory and just kind of scout it out for the rest of the late season and see if we can come in here and hang some stands for future hunts. Standing bean field back behind us. We got cut bean field out in front of us. It should be it should be money this time of year. It's pretty late, but I think we got a chance with it with us having food back behind us, so stick with us, we'll see what happens. They put the antler restriction back on. Out of proportion. Uh, yeah. yeah. We had a bunch of people ask for that. Yeah. And the check station. They said we want it back. Oh, yeah. I mean, that would, that would help. I think personally, the conservation of growing the CWD out of proportion. I understand it's a big disease. I understand it kills a lot of deer, but you know what? It comes from pen raised deer. That's where it originated from. From Colorado, if you don't want this to spread, yeah, outlaw out pen raised deer. If they couldn't mm -hmm. bring it over here, outlaw it. How hard is that? Well, the problem is it's already here now, so yeah, right now you just want to wipe it out, and then yeah, pretty much you're ready to all deer You know, so I hate the and then they'll put a bunch of restrictions on, so that way you can't. I hate know the, they grow it back. And you can't put corn or anything in front of your cameras or anything like that. Everything in early yeah, season with uh, that guy down there in Columbia, tuning some tackle. We stopped in there today. Yeah, where's that? It's I can't tell you how to get there. It's uh, we stopped in there today just to look at some fish and stuff. Dude's got some monsters in there. First of all, there's one. And second of all, the dude's just talking about just some monster deer that he killed. Like he killed uh, he killed one that was over 200 this year. He has a he has a he has a hell of a farm in Missouri. Shot at 26 yards with a rifle. He was, yeah. what, he was, what he was talking about is he how the barrel. he's so frustrated how he bow hunts so hard. He wants to kill these big deer with his bow, and they just never come into range. And of course, rifles is no gun than like 20 yards. He's like, I, I feel killed terrible for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what I was saying. I was like, oh my God, you killed 170 inch, 180 inch. And I was like, damn, that's just a bad deal. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he's got a farm going on here. He's not. <laughs> 
big as you really, it doesn't cover like yeah. a whole county. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I told him, he got, we got pictures of that big deer. I was like, you need to hunt him now. Not wait oh, yeah. <laughs> he can hunt now. He's predictable now. Right. When the rut comes, he could now. be somewhere else. He can feel that he go. That's about the size of the deer that I shot. The I second deer, deer, I shoot that second deer. Guaranteed. On camera, you betcha. I probably do too. Yep. Just, just for some fact, you're never going to hunt there again probably. Maybe. And that's the only reason. reason. If there was a chance he, that I might hunt it, yeah. I might pass him. Exactly. There's no point in growing deer because you're not going to hunt yeah. there no more. Yeah. It's Where the same as public. Where is it? Bergson's? This is Berg? I don't even know where Bergson's is. Out by Kirksville. Are you going to hunt there again? I mean, it's, you can't bow hunt it. It's all just open field. That's all it is. I don't even know if it'd be worth it. But there was a standing cornfield. I mean, you could put a camera there, though. So you had a right, so you were right hunting right now. I could have smoked either of these two. Dude, you should have. That second one, dude, he's pretty high up off his head. They both came up. Is this the, is this still the first one? Yeah. Oh, okay. They both. This deer came to about 19 yards. The second one came to about <sighs> 14 yards. Why don't you have any footage of that? Because Clint was okay. So we're in the shooting house. I'm on the left. Clint's yeah. on the right. Yeah. Deer came from our right. Yeah. He got behind us. Yeah. And we literally, I mean, he was so close we couldn't even move. I mean, uh -huh. I can see why he passed on this one. Oh, he's not barely. Sure. I don't think that other one was shooter either. But yeah. I thought I should have shot it just because. Just, just I don't scenario. care about this place. The situation, the scenario you were in, yeah. would have been a perfect deer to get on film. Oh yeah. I agree. But now I got a muzzleloader tag, so. That's true. This Did you get yourself a muzzle? I'm using clamps. This one right here is going to show you. That shot right there is. What makes him tempting? Yeah, right there, right yeah. there. Look at that. Look how wide his brow tines are from each other, though. Yeah. What do you think that is? 125. Probably. Yeah, yeah he's not 130. Let me look at this. He'd have been my biggest deer, I think. By five inches, I think. This deer in front of us here is pretty, pretty dang close to him. Pretty close. Number 12, 2016. Okay, he that was only 120. Yeah, I love this one. I love this one. Hey guys, welcome back to Timber Talk TV. It's the morning of December 10th. We're sitting down here in the bottom plot in a big bedding area in the timber. We, uh, it was about 23 degrees this morning when we left Macon. <coughs> we, uh, we're very hopeful for this morning's hunt. No winds calm, a lot of activity in the woods. The second rush should be starting up here anytime. Um we're just hopeful off we get a couple kills on camera this morning. We got Mundo running the camera down in the creek plot, so we're very optimistic about today's hunt and uh, we're just gonna stick it out for a while and hopefully get something on camera. If a big doe comes in, we get good footage of her, we're gonna go ahead and take her, but Let's see what the morning holds. It's overcast, no wind, pretty cold this morning. So, you know, it's December, still a little tough, but hopefully we get some good uh, second run, second run activity going on, and uh, maybe see if we can't get one on the ground for you. Stay tuned. It's the morning of December 10th. I snuck down here to the creek plot. Gordo's sitting in the bottom plot. I've already had a doe and a buck come in. It's about 30 minutes past first light. 
that doe came down to the plot. I was able to get some footage of her. The buck stayed up on the ridge, so I wasn't able to get any footage of him. He looked like a pretty good buck, though. I'll check the cameras after this hunt and see what, uh, see if he's walked by either, either of those. But I'm gonna get off here. Woods are alive. For the first time ever, we've got four cameras running. We'll see what happens. Stick with us.
Hey folks, welcome back to Timber Talk TV. Today is December 15th. We're set up here in public ground again on the cut bean field. We've been seeing a lot of deer come out here every night. I came out here last night and pre-scouted. And uh, I seen a few does come out right in front of the stand. We, uh, if we get a chance at a big doe tonight, we're going to take her. Um, we've seen a few bucks on our feet, just not a lot. Um, but it's pretty cold today. We have a front moving in for this weekend, so temperatures are supposed to drop. So I'm very hopeful that uh, maybe a buck might make his presence tonight and come out here in this field and eat a little bit. Um, I don't know a lot about this area, but there's a lot of buck sign here with a stand, a lot of rubs and stuff, so, um, I know Mundell and I seen some small bucks the other night out of here, you know, a few six points, but, uh, you know, it's late season, they gotta eat, they gotta fatten up for the winter, so you just never know, so, we are, we're gonna sit tight, they've been coming out about 4.30, so, um, we're gonna sit tight and see what happens, and, uh, Hopefully we can bring you some good footage. Stick with us. Mm-hmm. 